there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are going to be getting it all done. I will be sharing our toffee recipe, a beef taco skillet recipe, and hopefully motivating you to be productive as well. And as you might have heard, I have Jack here with me, so you might hear him cooing in the background. So this morning, I figured I would start by refilling some of our canisters in the kitchen. As we were unpacking, I really didn't know how I would be using these. I thought they were too small for flour and sugar and too big for baking powder and baking soda. But then I realized that since Juan and I use three different powders to make our coffee drinks, these canisters would be perfect to hold those. I think it looks much nicer too, rather than having the different containers always out on our counters. Next up, I had to give my little boy some lovin'. <laughs> I think he's remembering it now. And I had to get to work on unpacking some of Juan's shirts. How do you guys all add hangers to a ton of shirts at a time? Do you take out one shirt and put its hanger in and then move on to the next one? Or do you stack all the shirts first like I did and then add all of the hangers at once? As I was unpacking the shirts, I came across this little shirt that I made for Aubrey's second birthday party. I will link some of those birthday and party prep videos up above and down below in the description box if you'd like to check them out. I am super excited to see Jack in this little shirt someday and it'll probably happen sooner rather than later since he's so big. Afterwards, I moved into the kitchen to get Aubrey some lunch, start prepping dinner, and work on unloading the dishwasher. For dinner, we are having beef taco skillet, which requires tortillas cut up in little squares. Since I never know how Jack's nap schedule is, will align with dinner prep, I thought I would get the step over with early on in the day to make my life a little bit easier later on. Another thing I've done to make life a little easier is to put Aubrey's dishes in a little dresser at the edge of our kitchen. This way Aubrey can get her own plates, bowls, or cups and help set the table. She is proving to be pretty self-sufficient, which is really nice. Let me know down in the comments what types of things you do with your littles to raise them to be fully capable and self-sufficient. After prepping some of Juan's coffee cups for him to take to work early in the mornings, Jack had a major blowout, so I had to deal with that. I will spare you the gory details, but something I do to deal with the blowouts is have some laundry detergent in our bathroom so I can immediately rinse and wash the dirty outfit. I think he's laughing because this was really bad. Uh, but I washed the dirty outfit to get the soap kind of working. And then I figured I would work with the laundry since I had a load that needed to be dried anyways. In addition to my little laundry detergent trick, I do occasionally use Zout to prevent stains, especially on Jack's white outfits. You will see later on that these steps worked greatly at preventing a ruined outfit.
Up next, we are making dessert for the evening. Some call it Christmas crack, but we call it toffee in this house because I do not just make it for Christmas. You need a cup of butter, a cup of brown sugar, a sleeve of saltines, and chocolate chips. I eyeball the chocolate, but I think a small package, like 12 ounces, should be enough. Also, if you want nuts or some other topping, you could always prepare that as well. To start, you will want to line a pan with raised edges with either foil or parchment paper. In the past, I've always done foil, but then I remembered that when I did try parchment paper, it really worked out so much better. So I put my foil aside and lined the pan with parchment paper and spread out the crackers. Then I melted the butter over medium heat and added the brown sugar, brought that mixture to a boil and let it boil for about three minutes. While that was going, you want to make sure your oven is preheating to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and then pour the mixture over the crackers and spread it evenly so that every saltine is nicely covered. Then place the pan in the oven and let it cook for about five minutes. After baking in the oven, take the pan out and sprinkle on the chocolate chips. Let them sit there for five to 10 minutes to get super soft and then it will be much easier to spread the chocolate over the crackers. If you want any additional toppings, now would be the time to add them on while the chocolate is still, you know, melty. And then the last step is to place the pan in the freezer to firm up, and then once firm, break the toffee up into pieces and enjoy. Store any leftovers that you have, although it's usually pretty rare when we make this, store it in the freezer or the fridge just to kind of keep the chocolate from melting and getting too, uh, you know, soft. After taking care of some household chores, it was time to prep dinner. I'm making a triple batch of our beef taco skillet here because we were having family over for dinner and then also I wanted to make sure that Juan and I had a lot of leftovers. I did a straight recipe video early on in my channel so I will link that above in the cards and in the description box below if you want to refer to it later on. But first up, you want to cook your protein. I'm using ground beef and then remove any fat. Then we add in condensed tomato soup, some water, salsa, and the tortillas, as well as some cheese.
You hurt me, you did several times. It hurts to admit that we're no different. I find it hard to commit, but you don't even try. Still, I'm better with and without you. Oh, I I like to eat this with sour cream and then some type of veggies. For my veggie side this evening, I tried to come up with a corn dish. I added in some butter, some leftover evaporated milk from when I made my mom's birthday cake. I didn't want it to go to waste, so I thought it would work well with the corn. I added some crushed up saltines and more cheese because I'm a cheeseaholic. While this tasted fine, it could have been creamier. So maybe adding some cream cheese or I don't know, just something else. It would have just made it a little bit better. After dinner, I thought I would test out Juan's new lunchbox before using it to pack his lunch for work. I'd like to thank Natigo for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Natigo sent us this electric lunchbox, which can heat your food in the car or in the office or your home, really wherever you can plug it in. It comes with the heating lunchbox, a spoon and fork, a stainless steel food container, two cords, one for the car and one for the office, a lunch bag, and mine even came with a little plastic container that fits in one of the food compartments. On this day, I decided to heat up some pre-made waffles and some frozen sausages for Juan so that we could test out the product. If you were to take this to work and you wanted to keep the food cold, you could remove the stainless steel food tray and place it in the fridge. However, you need to make sure that the heating lunchbox doesn't go in the fridge or get wet. So when you are ready to heat your food, make sure to wipe down any condensation from the tray and then place it in the lunchbox, put on and secure the lid and plug in the device using the appropriate cord. Cook times will vary depending on the weather. I decided to check in on the food every 10 minutes just to kind of see its progress. After the first 10 minutes, the tray was definitely getting pretty hot and the food that was directly touching the bottom of the tray was warm. I rotated the food and after another 10 minutes, the waffles and patties were not quite ready. At 30 minutes, the waffles were crisping up a bit rather than being soggy, which was nice. And the sausages, which again were completely frozen when I put them in, were just about done. And after 40 minutes, everything was nice and hot and Juan approved. And he's kind of picky, so that says a lot. I think this lunchbox would be great for soups, spaghetti, eggs, or the beef taco skillet that I made this evening, or really anything that is cooked and that you want warmed up. It is also a great option if you are trying to avoid using the microwave or if you want a hot meal on the go. If you are interested in getting one of these lunch boxes, I will have the Amazon link down below in the description box. Again, I'd like to thank Natigo for sponsoring this portion of today's video. But without further ado, let's finish getting it all done and clean up the destruction that Aubrey caused during our dinner with our family.
I hope this video motivates you to get what you need done or provides you with some new recipe ideas. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you are new. I would love to have you stick around and I will catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.